you again for joining us on the phototherapy happy hour and uh as always my good friend rick and my good friend alec are both here to start reviewing some of the images you guys know we started a new thing with the last episode we are streaming live both on facebook in the phototherapy group as well as youtube uh, so make sure to check those out. Um, you know, they're, they're both streaming the same thing. I think the image quality is a little better on YouTube. So if you want to check it out so you get a better view of those images that we're going to be sharing, that's the place to go. And last week, we did something new. We actually, Rick and I didn't show any of our images because I think we're starting to get a little concerned that uh, <laughs> we're losing our edge. Uh, and we sh we showed our uh, our uh, phototherapy members images, um, and uh, it was very well received. People were really excited about that, right, guys? Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, as uh, as Juan was saying, we're getting blown away by the images that we're seeing. Uh, you know, uh, so, some of the people in our group are pros, but not everyone. And uh, we see these uh, photos by uh, enthusiasts. And we're so, uh, so impressed. So we thought we'd do another show. And Alec, you feel the same way, right? Oh, absolutely. Just just amazing. And uh, people were very excited to see the work of their peers. So I think this is a great idea to continue along. And Alec, how do we find the pictures for the... T so the topics today, we're going to be doing landscapes. I'm looking over here, landscape. Uh, I think shadows. We've got flowers. We've got inspiration. We have fun. And... Uh, and a couple of others. So uh, how do people... Uh, well, all of the images were selected based on a search of topics. So unfortunately, if you're not putting a topic on your picture, then uh, Rick probably didn't see it. He was, he was going through all the pictures that are out there. But if you have already posted, there are three dots in the corner of the screen. You just click on those dots. There's a drop-down menu that says add a post and topic add a post topic and if you don't see a topic i'm happy to add one i've been adding topics all week insects aperture backyard <laughs> so if people feel that we haven't don't have you covered shoot me a, a message and i will get it done for you alec gets up at 4 30 every morning to add topics he is the uh the king of the topics but seriously <laughs> uh, adding a topic is also good for you guys because if you're going to you know go on a trip and you want to get some inspiration and motivation for some close-ups or landscapes or uh, or shadows or flowers or whatever clicking on those topics is a really fast way uh to again to get inspired and to get motivated so before we get going Juan, what are you drinking Oh, hour. I I'm drinking, you know, my old standby. You know, this is just a. It, oh. It's like drinking uh, steak and potatoes, if you will. It's a Newcastle. You, love you Newcastle, know, it's my right? my default beer. If I can't find anything else, or I just feel a little nostalgic, Newcastle is it for me. So, how about well, you, Rick? What are you drinking? Well, I'm drinking water out of a glass Susan got me for uh, oh. Christmas with an R on it because we're at a shoot today <laughs> photographing uh, owls at a local. Uh, 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 local like wildlife center here, and it was cool. so hot. I'm not ready for the beer yet. And Alec, you're the tradition. I'm, I'm gonna guess. Snapple. I'm gonna guess. He's drinking a Snapple. <laughs> drinking a Snapple. Okay, guys. So let's go. And what we're gonna do is. Hey, uh, hey, Rick. Before we go, I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us on a Wednesday. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, we had to reschedule. My son's birthday is tomorrow, and we're doing something for him in the afternoon. So that's why we are rescheduling for today. Thank you. So a big, uh, big uh, happy birthday to your son. How old is he? He is turning 16. So I, I knew him when he was like, how long have I known you? I knew him before he was 10. He used right. to run we, around and sit on your lap. Right. Yeah, yeah. You and I, we've known each other for over 10 years. So he was, you know, by five or six when you when you first saw him running around my house. Yeah. In North in uh, uh, North Carolina, yeah. North Carolina, yeah. cool. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to go through the pictures here. I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen. So Juan and I are going to comment, but we would love to get your input in the chat, either on uh, uh, can these guys see it on YouTube too, uh, chat or just on Facebook? Uh, they can see the chat both. There's chat going on on both Facebook and YouTube, but Facebook seems to have more people on chatting. Okay, so Alec, if you want to and uh, if you want to read the questions while we're commenting. Oh, that would be cool. Okay, so here, here we go. So okay. here's the first image. So we're doing landscapes. Uh, Juan, were you here when you were out uh, on the coast with Spike? 
I believe so, yes. Yeah. This is, you know, the reason uh, why I like this picture, you know, the reflection is beautiful. And a tip on reflections is, you know, if you can, if the, if the, uh, the top part of the scene is fully reflected, don't cut off that reflection. So I think Phyllis Webster did an amazing job doing that. But also, I think, Juan, you'd agree sometimes that uh, sometimes a vertical landscape can be more, more effective and still have impact, more, more uh, effective than a horizontal landscape in the landscape mode. Well, I mean, especially when you're trying to include the, you know, this reflection that she's got going on here. I do. I like the image. I think I would have liked to have seen a little more action in those waves. I know she can't do anything about that. But I think that, you know, like last week we talked about this, having a right. little bit of action in those waves adds that little bit of interest. And you have that section there in the middle. You know, think about if you had a nice cool wave coming through or some waves crashing, um, it would have added a little bit more impact to the image. Yeah, and this picture was taken at low tide. And a tip, uh, a tip if you're going to photograph by the shore, definitely tech, check the uh, tide charts, right, Juan? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and yeah. you want to you want to go, usually you want to go at low tide, and you want to wear boots. Uh, I've been to this uh, location. Susan has been there, got some great iPhone shots. And uh, you definitely need, like, waterproof boots, and you have to be very careful. Uh, so safety first. So anyway, Phyllis, awesome job. Now, Gregory Johnson put Ooh. this in the landscape category. I'm not sure it's a, a landscape or a scenic, but it's still awesome. I thought the, uh, the streaking stars are great. The clouds in the back, it's a long exposure. I, I might have used, you know, sometimes I say embrace the uh, distortion. I might have used the perspective control to straighten up the barn. Uh, this shot was taken with a very wide angle lens. But I like the one, you mentioned the gesture, you know, the, the action. The streaking stars really, I think, added a lot here. Unless it's raining, yeah. side, unless it's raining sideways. <laughs> yeah, it certainly looks like streaking stars. But you're right. I think I would have tried to correct, per perspective correct that right side of that barn so yeah. that it didn't look like it was falling over. The rest, you can't really tell too much that there's that much distortion there. So I think that I wouldn't have necessarily um, bothered with that side of it, but definitely would have tried to perspective correct that right side i do love this sort of you know it, it has a feeling of like a, a sunrise or sunset yeah. where you can see the stars but you still see a little bit of blue in the sky and you can see that transition from dark to light as it, you get closer to the horizon um lots of interesting stuff here i can't really see all that well the oh no the the, the windmill doesn't seem to be spinning which is interesting you got a long exposure but the wind must have been perfectly still. Yeah, and the, yeah, I don't see any movement in the grass. In the grass, another, yeah. Another, another thing here that this uh, beautiful uh, photo by Gregory uh, Johnson, our friend who was with us in Costa Rica, uh, it illustrates that I think a key to a good nighttime picture is a foreground, <laughs> right? Who just wants to see a picture yes. of streaking, streaking you know, stars? And the foreground element is so interesting, and this has a lot of layers. We have the, the grasses, we have the barn, we have the windmill, we have the sky, we have the clouds. So this picture, I think, has a lot of sense of depth. So the tip is, you know, try to compose in layers. Actually, a couple of tips. Compose in layers, use a foreground element, use a long exposure. And if you want to, try a, uh, to control that, correct that perspective uh, distortion. Because, you know, the, t the best photographer in the world using a wide-angle lens would get the same shot, right, if they didn't... Uh, Unless it was a PC lens. A very right. Hey, Rick, um, uh, you know, Sissy here mentioned a, a good comment, and I was wondering about that as I was looking at this image, whether this is a composite or a long exposure. Um, because for those stars to streak that long, you would have had to have a pretty long exposure. You would have thought, you know, some of the grasses would have been out of focus and, and the windmill would have been out of focus. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at those stars, you have a, a dot and then a streak. Mm -hmm. So it does yeah. seem to me that this was a composite um, w where they put in the stars in, you know, in a composite layered afterwards or using a program like Star Stacks. Yeah. So, yeah, and so in pretty, photo pretty yeah, cool. Actually in Photoshop, there's an action that lets you do this. Yes, uh, right. Uh, too. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I will ask. I will ask. But either way, I think it's a, a nice shot, which is uh, why we picked it. Now, our friend Tommy Armstrong. He put this in the landscape mode, and I picked it because it's just so different, right? It's not really a landscape. <laughs> yeah. It's not, but uh, here's a, he's making an image with uh, impact here. 
you know, he does his amazing uh, creations from paint and textures, and uh, I just love it. And it's different. Well, you know, you know, it, it, you're right. It's not necessarily landscape, but I would call it maybe an intimate landscape, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, it could be an intimate landscape, or it could be, you know, a close-up shot. And you know, and Tommy, he, 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 we had him on the show. I don't know a few episodes back, and he was telling about telling us about what he does. So as I look at this, I'm kind of, I, you know, my mind is going in 20 different directions, trying to figure out what this is. And, you know, a lot of the really funky images that he was showing were paint, paint, right. uh, you know, different paint colors as they were swirling in other paint colors. Right. So this almost looks like dried paint, you know, different colored dried paint. So I don't know. Um, but it's, it's interesting. It makes you think as you're looking at it, right? Yeah. And if this were in black and white. This could look like a tree stump with moss on it, hmm. I think. So I'm going you know, yeah. to try to turn. Hey, Tommy, is Tommy here, uh, Alec? Can you see? I don't see him. I haven't um, seen him, no. Okay, so here's a, here's a shot. Uh, and I picked the shot for uh, a couple of reasons. So one, you're a, a great landscape photographer. You love landscape. <laughs> you love nature. What are, the, what are some of the things you would do to enhance, to correct, uh, enhance or correct this picture? So, I mean, I love the image. I love the feeling of it. I love the location, that, that sun as it's rising or probably setting um, is absolutely stunning. The, 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 the landscape is absolutely stunning. But there are a few things I think I would have done to improve the image. Um, you know, the first thing is, so it looks like you're kind of off the edge here a little bit. I would have gotten a little closer to the edge of the scene because that part on the left-hand side is a little bit distracting. It's really bright. And my eye tends to go towards the brightest part of the scene. And that lower left-hand, uh, I don't know, road or dirt path or whatever is a little distracting. So, you know, you would have, you know, it's something that you want to crop out. So I would have even gotten closer to the edge to get, rid of that or maybe zoomed in a little more so you wouldn't have so much of that um and if you had zoomed in a little more you could have also gotten rid of that white uh tree in the foreground which is stands out a little bit and again draws your attention and you could also clone that out as well um i do notice a little bit of flare on the right hand side in that area where rick is is pointing and I do notice some artifacting down by the water as well. So I don't know what's going on there, if that's a clone or some dust on the lens or something like that. What do you think, Rick? Well, I took the liberty of, uh, <laughs> of making, making all of, those changes. Yeah, <laughs> Making all those changes actually before we get on. So this looks a little soft because I enlarged from, uh, from the screenshot. But if, so if we look at this, you know, as, as Juan said, I, this road is like a little uh, light. This tree is distracting, I think. We have the flare here, and we have stuff going on here. So basically, I darken this, right, just using the uh, dodge mm -hmm. tool, cloned out the tree. Uh, this flare, see these dots here? These dots here are caused by dust on the lens. You know, shooting into the sun with the wide-angle lens. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a speck, you know, the tiniest speck, it's almost, you know, impossible to do this. And the tip is, when you're cleaning your lens, rather than just wiping all the dust around, wipes from the inside in a circular motion outward. So you're moving the dust and the particles out to the edge. There's also a little, uh, Juan and I, we talk about using border patrol. There's a little twig here. But I think what these dots down here are, I think they're like here. I think it's a lens flare. Unless there were uh, people skinny dipping in the water that he didn't want uh, in the picture. But there's like uh, eight or 10 uh, round circles here that, uh, shows that these were cloned out and i'm pretty sure they're these dots so basically it's a beautiful picture as well i also cropped it a little uh and cropping is very subjective i didn't think you know as uh, as we all often say if it doesn't add anything you know take it out but it's a beautiful scene and next time uh who's the photographer again uh arlene next time arlene Cornier? I, is uh, she there alec i don't know alec i'm not check. seeing her I anyway, haven't seen her. She she does join some of the some of the sessions, but I'm not seeing her online. It's, okay, it's a, Tommy. I'm sorry, Tommy was a little late, but he's here now. He says I could not get this to work. My landscape was a specimen of indecent her 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 hermit hermit from Grays we knew, Mount, we knew, Georgia. We, we knew I that. I saw it as a mountain <laughs> need a need a mineral or rock topic in organic nature. Okay, Tommy, I'll take care of it. 
Minerals or rock toxic? Say that three times <laughs> fast. Go ahead. I challenge you. The first Mineral part. Mineral rock toxic. Ir uh, iridescent hematite. Iridescent hematite. And iridescent hematite. <laughs> hey, that's pretty Very good. Very nice one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, Tommy, we were saying that if this were black and white, uh, and thank you for joining us again. That it could look like, uh, like down here, this looks like could looks like part look like part of a, a tree stump. Okay, so flowers. Flowers mm. is is the second most popular topic on on uh, on our Facebook group, and I just love the dark shadows here. I love how all these little spines here from the leaves and the flowers are like, you know, just sticking out like this. Yet we have this soft, beautiful area here. And I think the composition and the feeling and, you know, we talk about gesture in the water, this flower, you know, it looks like, you know, this part opened up and this is these like wings. I This is one of my favorite uh, photos. So, Stephen, you did a great job if you're listening. Yeah, I like this image too. Again, you know, these sort of moody images, we saw some of these last week as well, are kind of, you know, really interesting because it makes you look at a lot of the detail on the flowers. You know, but I do feel a little bit tight here. I want, I would like to see a little bit more space, especially on the left-hand side, right, Rick? Is, is, yeah. is um, it, it would be nice to have a little bit more room to breathe. It just seems a little bit tight. Yes, I, I yeah, and what we what you could do there is just in Photoshop expand the canvas, and content-aware film might work. Or if that doesn't work, you could just copy like a little portion here, and then just uh, bring it over. But you know, the most important thing uh, we always say is the mood and the feeling. So Stephen, we we love that. <clears throat> okay, Nancy Lee Mudd. Uh, it's a friend. Uh, she's down in Florida. I think, you know, during these crazy times and uh, one of the reasons why we're doing this happy hour is because we all did, <laughs> we all need a relief from uh, the news and the stress and right. ev <laughs> and everything that's going on. But I think Nancy Lee Mudd, who I met in uh, Provence, France, uh, when we were photographing the Camargo horses, at happy hour, by the way, and I'm not kidding. If she's listening, she'll she'll uh, <laughs> she'll attest to that. She's done amazing work during this lockdown. She loves to travel, you know, go all over the planet and stuff like that. In her house, she's doing amazing work. So this is possible. You know, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer wrote a book called Real Magic, and it talks about creating our own reality. Uh, Nancy Lee Mudd is uh, really creating some amazing pictures, creating her own reality. I just, it looks like, you know, I think if you put this into, I'm not saying that I would do it, but if you put this into like Topaz Impressions and use one of the paintbrushes, it would look like, you know, uh, a Monet or a, mm. a Cezanne. And I love the way that the, the top of the pot is off. Well, you know, what I like about this is, you know, how creative people are getting during yeah. this pandemic, you know, coming up with new topics and new things to shoot. I don't know what work Nancy Lee was doing before, but, you know, it's so cool that people are just getting out of their own um, comfort zone and trying to do new things. Yeah. How about the background? Yeah, no, it, I mean, it, the, all the elements you put in in there kind of go together because she's got the colors that are matching between the pot and the background and then the different parts of the flowers as well. It, it works very nicely. Hey, Alec, I wonder if Nancy Lee was inspired by Tommy's, uh, the background. Could be, because the color, the backdrop, it's fantastic, and she's yeah. getting a lot of love on both uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Yeah, it's really, you know, she's really a good, Nancy Lee is a good example. She says uh, at the top, this is what happens when my husband says, go to your room and play. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, she is just, no, I, I, some people are saying, I talk to a lot of photographers, oh, I'm bored, I can't travel, I can't go to Alaska, I can't go to Antarctica. You know, I think you guys know, uh, you know, Alec and Juan, that I've been having a ton of fun since March photographing my birds in the backyard. Right. So there, there are a lot of photo opportunities around. I, I really like this one from uh, from John. He says, from my pond, right? So that's pretty good, a double exposure. He didn't have to go to, uh, uh, what's what's a famous pond? I don't know. So no, Gal pond. Walden, Walden Pond. Yeah, Walden. right. Didn't Walden it, Pond, he did yeah. He <laughs> did this in his pond. Look at the gesture and the double exposure. So, you know, this could be a, hey, Alec, how about this? We start uh, We start another topic. I think we have too many topics, by the way, but uh, <laughs> let's add a topic, double exposure. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of a lost art nowadays, right? Double exposure. Some cameras, some digital cameras allow you to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, but not not that many of them allow you to do it. This is something we used to do a lot in film days. You know, we would oh, yeah. shoot a right. film, roll a film, you know, put it back in the camera and shoot it over again, trying, you know, and you would get some happy accidents. Um, but I love this. This is a, it's a lily flower. And with a second exposure being a long exposure of maybe the inside of the lily flower or because it's got the same yellow orangey as well as some mm. of the purple, but in different ratios. So I'm kind of curious again, you know, I love these images that make you think what right. was going on here, what the person did, how they created it. So very nice, very nice, John. I like it. You know what I think adds a lot? This, this leaf down here. This looks, this is out of focus leaf, right? Rather than it just being all black. I like that, but uh, it has such a movement. Okay, so the challenge uh, for everyone who's listening, and uh, maybe we'll make, a, I'll, I'll take a screenshot of this, and we'll make an announcement saying that we're going to look for double exposures. Uh, maybe some of our <laughs> listeners are too young. We used to do slide sandwiches, right? That's but right, just, yes. <laughs> Put a slide they didn't taste that good, but you know they were kind of no, fun. No, they didn't taste that good, but but sometimes they look good. Okay, I think uh, we've had Gary up here uh, before. Gary Shaver. This looks like also like a painting to me. Uh, I like the purple in the back. The it, you know, <clears throat> I always say everything looks good on the small screen, and I I think we were talking about this last uh, week, if not uh, I was on some other podcast or whatever, but. Since everything looks, because everything looks good on the small screen, it seemed like this, I bracket uh, my aperture. Because you don't know. It could be, you know, two in focus, could be two out of focus in the back. So, you know, it could look good at F11. It could look better at or worse at F16. And same thing for F8 or F5, 6. Uh, so I really like this, the feeling and the mood and the painterly quality. You know, this reminds me of uh, Nancy Lee's picture here. Very painterly. You know, I think that um, I love that background of the purple flowers, um, but the other bee bombs are a little bit distracting to me. I think These they're guys? taking away, yeah, the guys are down at the bottom, they're taking away from our main subject. So I would have either wanted to use a shallower exposure or shallower depth of field in order to, you know, uh, blur out those those uh, bee bombs in the, in the bottom there, or change your perspective a little bit so that you True would that. only get the bee bomb that's in front of you and then the purple in the background I, just as out of focus as it is now um so think about how can you isolate your subject how can you you know make your primary subject kind of a star in the scene and one of the ways to do that is really by isolating and creating a little bit of depth and dimension by blurring everything out in the background and we talk about that border patrol. So it looks like a hummingbird's beak. He's just hummingbirds right down here is flying. Fly. It's probably a twig. But it it's looks probably like a twig, it. yeah. <laughs> it's probably a twig. But anyway, using that border patrol is very important. You know, we posted a picture on social media. Maybe it's not that important. But if you're going to make a print, that border patrol, or enter a photo contest, that's very important. Uh Jamie Davison, another beautiful work of art. I love the gesture of these petals. You know, Juan was saying mm. about, you know, change your perspective here. If we look at, at the different flowers, we have different perspectives. So here you're shooting uh, either straight into or straight down. Uh, this is beautiful. Cannot wait for the bloom, uh, the lens baby image. Oh. Yeah, these dahlias, it seems like everybody is shooting dahlias because they do have some very interesting textures and patterns in the petal in the in the uh in the petals and in the inside. And you know, I, I've never seen two images of dahlias that look the same. Yeah. They always look completely different. And I think that they lend themselves really well for all these different kind of perspectives. Hey yeah. Rick, we have a we have a question. Mm -hmm. Or clarification, Gerardo, who is uh, yeah. jumping back and forth again, he gives me gets me dizzy between the two platforms. <laughs> uh, he, he asked the question: bracketing the focus is taking various photos with different focus and then putting them together 
with Photoshop and making one perfectly focused photo. So I think he's explaining stacking versus focus stacking. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's talking about focus stacking. Some cameras actually have this built in too, where if you want everything in the scene in focus, if we go back to, uh, this one, of course, everything has to be, you know, still and not moving. You'd focus, you know, here at this pedal, you'd focus here, you'd focus on the flowers here, you'd focus here and, you know, way back here. So you might take six or eight or 10, put them into a Photoshop or some other program. What's the other one, the Helicon one? Helicon Focus, yep. Helicon Focus, uh, so you could do that. But what we're talking about, uh, what I was talking about is taking a single picture and experimenting with different apertures to create different depths of field. And the same thing you could do, experiment with uh, different shutter speeds. And this is important. One was talking about, even though there's no water, well, actually, if uh, the water's moving, but it's frozen. So in a situation like this, I might try, you know, uh, you know, 1 25th of a second. I might try a 30th. I might try one second with a, a neutral density filter. So experimenting, Again, because everything looks good on the small screen, A and B. Sometimes you're having so much fun, <laughs> you don't pay. We we don't pay attention to uh, all the uh, the details. Well, but, but that, uh, I mean, but that's that's a great suggestion, Rick. Because one of the things that happens is that oftentimes when we're trying to come up with a shallow depth of field, a difference of you know a third of a stop or two thirds of a stop can make a difference in how out of focus that background is. You don't want it to be too out of focus, but you want it to be a little bit out of focus. So being able to bracket that aperture can be can be really useful in fine tuning an image, right? Yes, yes. And look at this. Look at the processing on this. You know, there's an expression that you can't spend too much time working on an image because your soul is in the in the image. And of course, if you take a picture of your cat or dog, your soul may not be in the image. But uh, okay, so uh, Jamie used the lens baby here first. Then she uh, played. Uh, is it a he or she, Jamie? That's uh, a she. That's a she. Yeah, Jamie. Uh, okay. Uh, then she played with Nick Color Effects uh, Pro, and then used Topaz Impression. So this is really a good idea too. Uh, Ansel Adams said a, a photograph is never done. So Jamie's good work. Good work, Jamie. You spent a lot of time on that. And speaking of uh, plugins and stuff like that, adding, I love the texture here. Whenever you have a plain background, even if you don't have a, a plain background, adding the texture can really make an image uh, pop. So this is, a, oh, Susan Salmon would love to shot a flower with the iPhone XS. Flower was posted, blah, blah, blah. The, t oh, the two textures we use. There you go. So yeah, I mean... Yeah, I know. I know folks that actually take pictures and collect textures, you know, so yes. that they can composite them on images, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah. I, it, I, sorry, go I, ahead, Rick. No, go ahead. No, I, I was, was just, just saying that, say, <laughs> say that, the, that the texture <laughs> is so nice and the frame, you know, this this like uh, this like uh, old time frame or whatever. It really adds a lot. It's a beautiful photograph, you know, where we have the action. And Juan, you and I talked about this that if you're photographing a stem of a flower or a river, you don't want it going right. I break this rule, but that's not really right. a rule. It's a suggestion. You don't want to go in right into like one of the corners. Mm -hmm. I think I think this was really good that um, it's not going exactly into the corner. And it's uh, with the texture, too. It's like it looks like a, a natural vignette, right? This is, you know, darker all around, bringing our attention right to these beautiful flowers. Yeah, I mean, I love the painterly effect of this. I've, I've seen these. So these are actually, I love these these kinds of flowers and the way that they look when they're kind of in a bunch together. Um, but it's kind of cool seeing in the, in this composite, you know, with a background and with a, you know, some sort of painterly kind of effect. Yes, very good. Good job, Michael Smith. Okay, this is uh, from our friend uh, Glenn, <laughs> Glenn Taylor, right? Yeah. I, I love I love this uh, sunflower. I love what's going on down here. This bug, right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty funny. It's almost like you can almost come up with a little story here. Like the bug is getting ready to pounce on the flower, and the flower is closing its petals to protect itself. Or yeah, um, I love the 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 way that bug is shaped, and that it looks like it's these big strong arms to its side, about to come in and in. Uh, uh, and take over the flower. There's all sorts of little neat stories that you can make uh, of this image. I, but I love the 
I, I love the juxtaposition of that yes. insect and the flower um, yeah. and the angle that he took in order to make that insect kind of, you know, big into the scene. Because, you know, this insect is probably just a fraction of the size right. of that flower. But by him getting in nice and tight on that uh, on that bug, it made him much bigger in the scene. It does look yeah. a little soft, but I think the power of the bug and the impact and the, uh, you know, the, the, the gesture here. I, Juan, does your son watch uh, SpongeBob SquarePants? He's too old for that, yeah. He's, well, did he? <laughs> did he used to watch it? Uh, not so much, no. Because no. there was a, there's a character in there, uh, Mr. Krabby. He makes Krabby Patty. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this, this uh, Alec, do you know uh, SpongeBob? I know Squid the man, yes. I, yeah. I see that, yeah. I see the resemblance. You know, the but also, that... if our friend Don were with us today, he would be referring to that bug as the actor, which he I think would... just illustrates the point because it's telling a story and you wonder what he's going to do next. Oh, that's good. Thanks for adding that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I would just take out, you know, again, using these are little things, you know, take out this little twig down there using Border Patrol. But Glenn, uh, well, look at his caption. Take me to your leader, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so. That was that was, uh, that was nicely really done, cool. Glenn. Yeah. Uh, then okay, so that's it for the uh, flowers. Let's go to inspiration, which is spelled wrong, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, <laughs> you know, in these times, I think we all need a lot of uh, inspiration and motivation, which is again one of the reasons why we do this. Uh, we try to uh, inspire, motivate, uh, and entertain <laughs> somewhat. Uh, but I just love the, uh, the the feeling of this under the inspiration and the m motivation, right? It's uh, I can imagine, you know, a Buddhist monk in Nepal holding this a uh, candle, or you know, they could have been taken, you know, in someone's uh, kitchen, Nancy Lee uh, mud. But Jennifer uh, did a great job on this. I just uh, love it. And yeah, you know, she's just, been struggling lately with all the turmoil in the world, right? So. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, I, I read that and I kind of sympathize because I'm kind of the same way. I, you know, I used to be a news junkie, and I have not really been following the news as closely because things are so kind of crazy out there today. And so it's it's enjoyable to see, you know, kind of images like this and a soothing, um, kind of you know, calming type image. I can just picture you know, holding this candle myself and kind of losing myself looking at, looking into it. Well, I'm taking a screenshot of this. As our members may have noticed, we're doing something new also on our Facebook group page. We're using members' photos as the banner photo. And we're going to change it uh, up from uh, time to time. And I think this would be a great one to have, uh, mm -hmm. to have up there. It's just so... Uh, I have to apologize for the crop. You know, Juan knows... Uh, and Alec knows I'm a nut on cropping. And when I send my uh, pictures to my book publishers, I send a little note. I say, crop my pictures and you're a dead man. <laughs> but uh, Or a woman. Want, or a woman. But uh, you're... And I uh, think Linda may want to use this for Monday meditation. I think she may want to use a... this. But about the crop, we're locked into certain dimensions. So, uh, you know, we have no control over that. But I think... Uh, I'm going to do you, that. You're talking about the banner on the, on the Facebook. Facebook group. Yes, right. on the Facebook group. But we have a nice black and white. Uh, I think he's your friend, uh, Juan. Steve, who's up there now? Steve, uh, Steve Nimsik? Yes, yes. Yeah, oh yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Yes, he's been like with me on a bunch of different trips. Very cool. Uh, is Jim Griggs with us, our, our moderator today? He's, uh, I haven't he, seen him. Ah, he's here all the time. Uh, we usually don't put up, uh, when we're doing stuff like this, our own pictures, but uh, this was such a cool shot. I put this up. Uh, a lot of it is so focused on the serious shots, right? right? Um, that, that we forget the shots. Uh, uh, we have a you know, I could have been there photographing the night sky like this and, and putting um, putting our, uh, ourselves in the scene. So I love this. Yeah, no, this is really neat. I love... Like you're saying, yeah, I hardly ever take pictures of myself, um, but this is really cool that he was able to do that and come up with something that uh, is interesting, telling you about what he's doing. Um, so, uh, and, and he got the exposure right on, being able to get that light on the back yeah. of the camera <laughs> to eliminate his face and eliminate yeah. his arms, give you a little bit of definition. That worked yeah. beautifully. 
Well yes. done, Jim. This is great. Yeah. So, Jim, uh, thank you. Uh, if you're not here, you could see this on the uh, rewatch. And I was going to, you know, we were going to have like a sunrise, sunset, you know, uh, uh, display in today's happy hour because everyone loves sunrise and sunset pictures. And it's actually a popular topic. Uh, and Alec has added a lot of uh, <laughs> sunrise and sunset uh, uh, tags to the uh, to the pictures. But I think this this goes beyond just the sun, sunrise or sunset picture for me. Yes, the boat's dead center and the sun is dead center. But I just love the. Uh, the uh, God rays, as uh, as Ron Johnson calls them, they. Uh, I think uh, last week we had some beautiful God rays. And, yeah, no, uh, some it, of yeah. Pictures, and I think the fence. You know, you know. It, I think when you're in a situation like this, we can ask ourselves: Do we want to show the hand of man? Do we not want to show the hand of man? Even though the boat is, you know, obviously the hand of man. So I might take it both ways. I might take it with the fence, and I might take it without the fence, and see which one I like later, because. I'm sure the uh, the scene was so beautiful. Again, sometimes you're enjoying the scene so much you don't think about all the uh, technical stuff. Well, I like I I think I like the fence because it gives you a sense of place, yeah. right? If we had just shot the water with the god rays, it would have been mm. a nice shot, but it wouldn't have given you the same feeling for the scene, for the sense of place. Yeah. So um, I do like it. I think that. You know, maybe seeing a little bit more of the fence. You the, right now the cropping at the bottom yeah, yeah. is a little. Uh, you're cutting that la that that stretch of that fence out a little into the scene, um, but but I like it. I'm a, I'm a sucker for for you know quote yeah. unquote God rays. So um, beautiful beautiful shot. And this is one of those scenes where you know putting your primary subject dead center absolutely works. Definitely. And a great exposure. Probably, you know, we could see detail here. We could see detail here. So basically the highlights aren't blown out and we could see into these shadow areas, maybe even a little texture on the fence. So I don't know how much processing went in there, but Phyllis Webster, uh, who follows everything that we do, uh, she says good eyes. So I would have to uh, second Phyllis's uh, opinion. Uh, I love this. I love the reflections mm. in, the, in the water, right? Uh, a great uh, f a firework shot. Uh, we had a reflection shot uh, before uh, uh, Phyllis Webster had the lighthouse, and we it showed how important uh, and dramatic a reflection can be. But you know, this is the the squiggle in the water created by the waves. I think is just awesome. So, Joe, you did a great job here. Donna Lake. Yeah, yeah, this is it's really really cool. I love how the reflections make the uh, lights of the fireworks. You know, kind of these really crazy busy squiggles but it, it it does work um and the, the different colors the way that some of the are these boats in the foreground rick yeah they look like upside down boats like on a dock. yeah yeah the, the, it's really really cool i love um the colors the action the movement in the scene um good eye pretty cool yeah, and this is another example where you want to experiment because you know 30 a 30th of a second could look good a 15th could look good right a 20th uh so when you're photographing anything with action in it i would experiment with different uh different shutter speeds but this is a great exposure and i, I love i love the uh, the red uh Look at uh, oh, so this is in shadows here okay so now yeah now we're going into uh we're going into shadows so our friend ronnie uh, we did a workshop uh, together a while ago. She posted this a picture, and I, I really like this picture. And uh, I forget the photographer. Uh, the photographer's name's Jim Knockway, maybe I forget. Anyway, he said there's probably five pictures within a picture. So I like this picture, and I, you know, I like to play around. And I always ask. I, I always ask the people. I said, "Do you mind a suggestion? Do you mind if I uh, play around?" So you can see down here. I, I asked her. So I thought this is a very nice picture. Uh, I think she took it in uh, Cuba, where we're going next year, hopefully, <laughs> right, Juan? Yeah, yeah hopefully, if things uh, if <laughs> if things turn around, we are leading. You and I are leading a workshop in Cuba. I've, I've been leading workshops in Cuba for many years, yeah. and uh, I'm excited to have you along on that trip. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah, Susan, I've been there twice. And what month? Uh, what month is that next year? Uh, I believe it's March is when we have our workshop. Well, I hope uh, I hope things are calming down. But anyway, talk about seeing a picture within a picture. And again, uh, Ronnie gave to do this. I love this picture shadow. 
But I saw, I thought this could be a nice picture too. So I just used the shadow and the uh, and the man, and I put a little uh, vignette around it. So the tip is always look for a picture within a picture. Uh, Stephen put the, this in the shadow category. Could have been in the flower category, but I, I think the shadows here really make this. Uh, I love the the, the dappled light. Uh, one, I remember. <laughs> We were on a workshop in Mount Rainier. We went to this wildlife park, and uh, one of our uh, co-leaders was talking about dappled light, uh, how important uh, that, how nice that can look on a subject. So this dappled light, I think, really adds to the mood and the feeling of this picture. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, and it's actually kind of surreal looking at this image. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I know I'm looking at a flower, but if I let my mm -hmm. wander off a little bit, you know, it looks like a lot of other things. It could be like an alien pod or it could be, yeah. you know, uh, a, a, a sculpture. It could be a lot of different things. Again, you know, images that make you think tend to, you know, make me linger a little longer. Look at the image and inspect the image. So uh, well done there, Steve. Um, I do love I do love the shadows as they are cast on that on that flower. And like you said, the dappled light, the yeah. broken light as it's falling on that because it gives you a little bit of, of, a, of a view into parts of the leaves, parts of the flower, but not others. So it makes you, again, add to that mystique and to that, uh, you know, trying to figure out the story of what's going on here. Yeah, it's a, it's a lady slipper, but look at these. Again, lady slipper. I would have never thought that was a lady slipper. Yeah, I guess it's, a, it's the bud. Yeah, the, the bud, bud still. It, it's it's, it's yeah. kind of weird, huh? Cool. It looks enough breathing room on. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that uh, we have a lot of breathing room from the bud, which is our main actor in the scene over to the right. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's fine. You know, I have salmonisms. You could come up with pondisms. Right? Uh, like, yeah, it doesn't work as first, well. <laughs> first one, first one, wanisms. It could be a one wan wanisms. Yeah. Wanisms. It could be your, what your first one could be like, uh, take a breath. Take a breath, right. yes. Take, a, take breath a breath and a, give your room subject. You give your breathe. subject room to breathe, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm challenging Juan Pond for next week to come up with five Juan... Juan <laughs> one isms. One is, one is okay? <laughs> Sounds good. Just come up with one. Okay, I don't know if we showed this one before from Helen McLean. I've never uh, seen this before. This is cool. Yeah, look at this taken uh, at the Louvre Museum in Abu Dhabi. This... This is just so beautiful, I think. Uh, and it's, we were talking about telling a story. The actor, Alec, you said before that the little tiny bug was the actor, right? right? So right. this illustrates that no matter how small a person is in the scene, that adds something. This would be a totally different picture uh, without that person in, right in the, in the shaft of light there. I, I, love the, I love the exposure. I love the person. Uh, it's... it's we, we have an angle going here. We have a straight angle here. We have this going back this way. We have the lights coming down like this. We have these here. Uh, Helen, if you're listening, en enter this in a, in a photo contest, I think, a black and, in under the black and white category or shadows. Yeah, I mean, talk about timing, right? This is all about timing. Had that person not been in that spot, that exact spot, the image wouldn't yeah. have been this impactful as it is. And like yeah. you said, we can recognize that human shape anywhere. Um, so it really, you know, plus that shaft of light brings us right onto that human subject that's, that's, that's standing there. Um, and the human subject is a little bit kind of, um, uh, distorted, if you will. And you see how the head is so much bigger. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, there's some mystery to the image by being this dark kind of brooding scene. But the fact that this person is not a normal looking person. Yeah. That's again, more to that story in the scene and there's a movement in the legs right you can mm -hmm. see that that the person the separation walking. in the movement yeah, separation, the separation in the legs movement yeah very oh, nice this is this is someone says uh wow if i weren't so old i'd ask what time of year and what time of day i'd go and get one i'm impressed love your scene so peggy pega says that uh Okay, another shadow. We had a couple of shadow pictures <laughs> of birds with uh, shadows. Yes, so if we, you know, the thing is this, if get, getting back to this one, if we set out to shoot in black and white, 
He set out to shoot in black and white. And this could be a good assignment for us uh, during lockdown. You start to see in black and white. You start to see uh, values, and you're not enamored with the color. Uh, same thing with infrared. Juan, I know you do some uh, inf infrared photography. Mm -hmm. um, if you're shooting infrared, you're going to see those green leaves as white. You're going to see the sky as black if you have that kind of converter. Uh, I know uh, David Stern has the infrared uh, conversion where uh, where uh, he has a blue sky. But the thing is, with black and white, if you start, if you set out to shoot black and white, you're going to start to see in black and white, and that that makes I think composing and exposing. Um, a little differently. So actually, I have a friend, Lewis Kemper, who's a member of our group. I went to a presentation of his once uh, a long time ago. Uh, if he's listening, uh, he'll, he'll remember this. He said if he gets a good picture, he'll he'll make it a black and white just to see you know the different values and the different tones in there and then check out the exposure. So that is a good idea. If you get a picture you like, I think switch it to uh, black and white. But I like the shadow. I like the shadow. The background, you know, was a little busy. Uh, we could blur that in Photoshop, right? We could, uh, we could definitely. Well, uh, what I would do is I'd go uh, filter, convert to smart filter, blur the whole thing, and then mask out this other stuff. But I, I really like the the shadow here. You know, it'd be really cool. Uh, getting back to uh, Ronnie's picture, right? It's really cool if the bird had taken off and it was just the shadow. But uh, I really like it because you can see the beak here. Yeah, the shadow is kind of interesting. Uh, you know, the fact that the, 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 my, my, my issue with this image is, again, I'm a wildlife photographer, so I'm always looking at these things. We have no connection with our subject here, right? We can't see the face. We can't see the eye. I always want to be able to see the eye to make a connection with my subject. I know that this, the topic here and our point of interest is the shadow but the shadow, it has to be the shadow of something. And we're not, you know, we see the subject. I, yeah. I'm not connecting with it. Um, so I would have liked to have seen more, you know, being able to connect with the subject as I'm seeing. Uh, I, uh, I understand what you're saying. And he actually says, it. he says, well, photographing the bird from behind with no eyes in the image bucks the norm. I was more interested in trying to capture the shadow on the rock. In the bright conditions, I managed a single exposure that matched my vision. I uh, and I like that. I you know I might have toned this down a little. Uh, got a lot of comments here. Uh, you did a great job, <laughs> even without the eyes. But uh, yeah, I think one brings up a, a good point. So the next category is uh, fun. And Susan and I were having some fun last night on our pond where, uh, at, well, Juan, you've been where we made the dancing with the tripod video. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That we so that showed was, last week. Was it last week that we showed that? Yeah. Citra Dreams yes. was uh, our, my choice last night. Uh, so anyway, we're going to have some fun uh, shots since we're coming down the home Oof. stretch here. Uh, you know, I would say five years ago, Scott Kelby was against replacing the sky because it looked fake. So what Scott Fl uh, Flattery did here is he replaced the sky uh, with Sky Loom. Uh, I don't have the before and after one. But it, it looks it looks pretty real. And again, this is in the fun category. This is in, in the nature, wildlife, National Geographic. You know, this is what it looks like. So I think it's a good idea. You know, Nancy Lee, if we go back to her her picture, well, we, uh, well wherever the heck it is, uh, she's having fun. And I, I've been replacing the sky in some of my pictures because uh, in Luminar, uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing how accurate it is that you could actually see, uh, like in between here, and probably if we zoomed in the feathers, it's that good. The problem with replacing the sky is that people are using the uh, the supplied sky replacements <laughs> rather than <Right>. their own. <laughs> so, Juan, you were talking about shooting textures before. You shooting your own textures to add your textures. Uh, so, I would say if you're going to replace the sky, go out and shoot a sky, uh, or ask Juan and I to send you sky. We'll send them to you. But I like. I, lo the, I uh, love. Yeah, I love the booby image. I think this is Nazca booby. Um, you know, you can see the eye ring. You can see so much detail in the scene. You know, and you look at this image, and you can tell something is a little off, but it's still yeah. fun. I love. I yeah. love the. Um, I love the way the expression of the bird. I love. You know, the cool thing about the boobies is that they're always all about their feet. You know, yeah. they're always playing out their feet or whatnot, and they do this even when they're flight, like you can see in this image. Uh, Fun. You know, you know Don Carter? 
Uh, yeah, yes, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was he was the president Nampa? of Nampa. We did a we had a <clears throat> we were doing a project once, and we had the Battle of the Bird Photography tips, where he would give a tip and I would give a tip, and uh, one of the tips was wings up or wings down, right? You know, right. if the eye's not in focus, you miss the shot. That's another one. But here we have the wing up and the wing down. Well, it's probably the same level, but it looks like that. So that's a good bird photography tip, a uh, bird in flight tip, a wing up or wing down. Uh, Tom Reese is back. <laughs> Again, we're still on the fun category. You see him down here. He's always in a purple uh, shirt. He was with us, right, uh, Alec, in China? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, He's really a funny guy. He is really a funny guy. He, he says, week 18, my wor world. So he put a caption on this, which is a good idea. My world seems much smaller this year. He, he's a master. <laughs> Maybe he, could, he should do a class on masking uh, uh, and uh, inserting subjects. I mean, this looks pretty good. Uh, he has, he I mean, has he's the got the shadows right and everything. Look at the shadows at the bottom of that, uh, that stepladder. Yeah, he's really, he's really, he spends a lot of time doing this while well, he's been doing it for 18 weeks. So, Tom Reese, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Kessler, uh, yeah, Stephen Kessler, he's the master of the mirror image. Uh, I was going through and he has so many fun uh, mirror images. And uh, you could do this uh, easily in uh, Photoshop. And maybe if you want to know, you could ask Stephen uh, how he does it. Uh, it's only three or four uh, steps. But I, I think, you know, talk about fun. Uh, this looks kind of like a little face to me with two eyes yeah. and the nose poking out over here. Uh, guys, what do you think? Yeah, Alex, I you want to face right me? away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it's neat. I think it's hard to find. This is a double mirror image right this is like horizontal yeah. and vertical at the mm -hmm. same time and i think it's hard to find those images that work that well like this one does uh it, it's almost like a little psychedelic looking flower pretty pretty neat pretty impressive yeah follow his work if you go on the topics go on fun or in the uh in the members, uh, on the homepage, if you click on members, there's a magnifying glass next to that. You could type in the member's name. Uh, I think that I, I was looking at about six or eight of his pictures today. It was beautiful. Linda Cullivan, who uh, Mike and I, uh, who, <laughs> Mike, and I, Mike was married to her. Mike and I know and Juan, and Juan knows. I love this picture uh, because it's just high key. A lot of people want to get, you know, if you're shooting uh, a scene like this, then they say, oh, I want to go for like, you know, the National Geographic shot, you know, super sharp and things like that and accurate color. I love the way that she did this uh, high key, this high key image with the subjects off center. And uh, it's just it's just uh, captures the mood, uh, creates a beautiful mood to me. Yeah, I mean, the position of the of the Sandhill Cranes initially when I saw this, you know, I thought this was, you know, a winter scene of right. cranes in Japan or something like that. But looking at her, at Linda's comments, this was in Bosque de la Pacha, New Mexico. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful scene. The position of the birds, the way that they're, you know, in the water and the high key. But it's not just a high key. It looks like it was a, a color conversion as well with remaining or retaining some colors like the red of the crest of the... Yeah of the uh, sandhill cranes as as well as some of the brown on the wings so beautiful nicely done this is this is this is an image i would print and have hanging on my wall yeah she got 62 likes and 10 comments including one from me i said high five for your high key image and that when we're doing portraits we could make high key and low key images so high key has you know a lot of whites in it and uh and by the way we're going to bosque uh next this year december yeah december, december hopefully this year on a workshop uh i think we have one or two spots open uh, hopefully that's going to happen uh but this virus thing has to get uh, under control so anyway positive great... thoughts keep thinking uh, positive thoughts <laughs> you're coming right alec i am and you, you might have a new uh, camera and lens oh i will have a new camera <laughs> and lens <laughs> cool uh look at steve oh steve has oh. a he has, a, he has the cover uh, photo on our Facebook group. Uh, how do you pronounce his last name, Juan? Nimzik. So he's your, I think he was with you in Yellowstone, is that correct? Oh, he's, yeah, he's been with me on a bunch of different trips. He's been with me to Yellowstone. He's been with me 
to um, uh, North Carolina, Pennsylvania. Um, he signed up to go to Costa Rica with me next year. So, yeah, he's been with me in a bunch of different places. Well, he, he either he learns a lot, learned a lot from you, or uh, he comes along for fun because this illustrates so many great uh, bird tips. Wings up, right? Gesture. Right. If, if the eye's not in focus, uh, it's an environmental shot. If, if those uh, reeds weren't on the left in the, mm. in the foreground, it, you know, it would just look like they're in the water. So this picture has a sense of depth, the exposure on, on the... Uh, on the wings, even the bright part, I can see detail on my screen. Uh, it's, it's telling a story. He says, "Egret squabble." I, I, I'm jealous. I wish I had this shot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you and me both. This is, you know, this is beautiful. This is perfect. The, the, the composition is perfect. Those reeds on the right, the reeds on the left. The way that the two egrets are connecting with each other. They both have their beaks open. The wings are both open. There's separation yeah. in the legs. You know, I, I, it doesn't get any better than this and the action that's going on, you yeah. know, with both the crests kind of open up and flare. Right. Uh, really, really make the image. Re really nicely done, Steve. This it's is really awesome. It's really nice. So basically, I forgot to say this, now we're doing beautiful birds, which is another category. So here we have a high key image. <laughs> As opposed to non-beautiful birds? Well, uh, we could have not. We could have ugly birds like uh, okay. uh, turkey vultures, right? Oh Alex, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Alex, hey. there we go. Another topic. I got, I got and pictures I, of turkey I vultures that are awesome. That topic. So. <laughs> okay. How about ugly, uh, out of focus, Ug so, ugly uh, ducklings? <laughs> anyway, all kidding aside, we have high key, and then uh, Carolyn Fox did a low key picture. Mm. Uh, I, I have some pictures of swans on a. On a, on a lake built by here and some geese on on my pond here, but none compared to the lighting here. The lighting here is just uh, well, the gesture is beautiful. The lighting, the low key lighting, it's so dark in the back. I don't know how much uh, she says she was lucky to get this shot. Uh, I don't know how much processing went into this, uh, but Carolyn, I I love this the feeling, the mood, and the feeling of this and the composition. Right, you have that, the, you know, the 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 way, the, uh, the the splash behind. I think that that really is a lot. You know, Carolyn lives just outside of Yellowstone, so she's right. posting images of Yellowstone all the time. And this is the trumpeter swan. I believe it's you know near Yellowstone, near her house. It's, as she's saying here, yeah. uh, and I photograph these in the winter, especially. I see them quite a bit in Yellowstone, and I, I'm with you. I love I love the shot. I love. The uh, the wake and the splash of the water and like she says in there that wake it's almost like a EKG graph right right um, of a heartbeat graph yeah, right you know really nicely done I love the detail and I love the light on on the subject and I love like you said the low key plus the reflection everything about it you know it's just so clean simple we know what the image is like and there's lots of detail you know. There's even a little story that you can make up in your head behind it. Nicely look done. Look at this. Look at this. I know. Little, separation there. A little there. bit of separation. So maybe that's what she was saying with the lucky shot. If the head was over here or or the, this wing was over there, that little separation, I think, is just uh, beautiful. I saw uh, Rob Smith's uh, Nature Photography posted this, I think, just today. Uh, it's one knows what a bird on a stick photograph and Alec uh, <laughs> actually came up uh, with the, with an expression. He says, as long as it's an, inter it's an in interesting stick, it's okay. <laughs> and I That's think right. this is, right. This is a very interesting, Absolutely. very interesting stick. And some photographers might've uh, chosen not to include that branch, you know, over here, but I, I like, uh, I like all the open space here. Uh, this is framed for a cover, uh, Rob. So he's an amazing yeah, the subject. And the subject looks proud to be on that stick. Yeah, it's, it's best a, is out. You know, this is the best bird on a stick. Uh, this is another category. <laughs> this is the best bird on a stick picture I've ever seen. Well, it's an interesting stick, like you said. You know, yeah. I, so I think it, it it kind of makes it in. You know, he looks like he's you know regal, kind of sitting there deciding what where his next meal is going to come from. You know, I don't know uh, if you guys can uh, if you guys can see this. But does this look like a, like an animal? <laughs> it does, right? Here's the, yeah. the nose. Here's the mouth. Here's the eyes, right? 
It looks like yeah. a looks like um, a llama. Oh. <laughs> it does. I'm gonna make, <laughs> maybe. You're you get a crop it in tight so you can see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm still drinking water. But anyway, I, I was looking around. I was looking around. Is this an? This is another bird down. What is this down here? No, I think that's just part of a branch. Yeah. Anyway, it's a really a good. You should definitely follow Rob Smith again if you go in members. Go Rob Smith, a nature photography. Uh, he's doing uh, amazing work. You know how Juan you know, specialized in wildlife photography and nature. Yeah. This is what he does, and. Uh, this picture, you know, I'm working on pictures in my backyard. Uh, one, how do you say his name? Gurav. 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 He, was with yep. us, he was with us in Boske, Del Apache, remember? Yep, he was with us in Boske. He was with me in Yellowstone in the winter many, many years ago. So this is his, uh, this was taken in his backyard. And I think this is just a beautiful photograph of uh, these bee eaters. Uh, these green bee eaters. It's uh, I love the background. I love the texture. I love that depth of field that we were talking about. I like the gesture. Uh, but here's the interesting story. Uh, and Juan will remember this. We did our workshop in, uh, I guess, November. Yep, probably. Late November, November, early December, maybe. Something like that. And this young man <clears throat> uh, came on the workshop, and he was so depressed because he had just come from um, uh, a major photo convention. Remember, Juan? Uh, yep, and, yeah, I remember. And he had a portfolio review by a very well-known photographer. So I'm not saying the name of the convention. I'm not saying the name of the photographer. And I think the photographer told him to sell his gear or something like that. Yeah, um, the, the, yep, that's exactly right. He told him that he needed to get rid of his gear because you know, he was never going to make it. Right, and he was really he was really down. So Juan and I, as always, we try to encourage him. Now he's leading bird photography workshops, you know, in India. He's doing amazing work. So follow this young man. Uh, I think he's uh, he's really doing a great great uh, job. So I'm going to stop screen sharing now because it's six oh two. We're two minutes over. Let's share it anymore, right? Correct. 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 Well, listen. That was fun. Alec, we had a lot of comments. We did. Uh, we had a lot of comments, a lot of viewers, and uh, it's very clear that our members really like seeing and uh, the sharing of uh, their work. Cool. Yeah, guys, I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're always open to new suggestions and new things to do. So, you know, we kind of did this, you know, serendipitously, you know, came up with some images to show. But if you guys have ideas or other things you want us to share yeah. with you guys, you know, feel free. We're open for you guys, uh, for just for suggestions from you guys. So you know, maybe next uh, next week we'll show a few images of ours and some images of the group or, you know, or if you guys yeah. have even a better suggestion, let us know. Definitely. Uh, maybe iPhone pictures we should show sometime. Yeah, that's category? a good idea. Do we have, <laughs> Alec, do we, we have We don't, that? but we should. Okay, let's do that. Well, well, let's not say we're going to do it. Let's try to do it, see how many. But uh, I know we're going to have to get Susan Salmon to uh, uh, contribute. She did that video of the Cormoran fisherman. You saw that, Alec? Yes. Uh, when we were in China together. So I think yeah. iPhone might be a nice, uh, well, we have to say smartphone, right? Of course, not everyone right. uses it. I'm Correct. shocked that everyone doesn't use an iPhone. and But that would be a cool thing. So, uh, Alec, you want to make it a announcement of that or uh, you want you know i'll do it i'll use one of susan's pictures okay okay so next week we'll be back on uh, thursday at five o'clock correct yes thursday yeah uh, someone was just answering to somebody because they were asking whether we move this to wednesday and i would say no that is typically on thursdays for today i had a uh, conflict for tomorrow so we did wednesday for this week but typically it'll be thursdays at 5 p.m well, and hopefully that'll be the last change for a while. Because first we started, we do it <laughs> twice a week. Then we started just, no, we started on Zoom twice right. a week. Then we went to once on Zoom. Uh, once, once, yeah, once, yeah, we, we yeah. And, then, and we, then, then we went to YouTube. Then we went to this and that. And then we oh, went no. Fridays, now Thursdays. So again, you know, we're trying yeah. to figure this out as we right. go along. And, uh, you know, so far it's, you guys are enjoying it and that's all that matters. One thing that has remained constant is the Monday meditation uh, with Linda Marshall and Alec, right? 
Yes. Correct. Yeah. Good. It's good. Well, listen, Juan, happy day to your son. Uh, don't. I think I told you when I uh, when I first met you and him. I said, "Don't blink," and now you you realize you blinked, and he's going to be sixteen, yeah. right? Sixteen years old. You know, things have changed quite a bit. You know, it's it's insane how fast, especially these past couple of years. They just grow so fast. It's crazy. I know. My friend at 92, and he said, I can't believe how fast the time went. So anyway, everyone have a great uh, uh, rest of the week. The rest of the week, yeah. <laughs> Hump day. And, uh, and please stay safe. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Take so care. Long. See you next Bye, week. Bye, everybody. Bye.